Alright, I am going to do some narration on a clip I actually put up on my YouTube channel roughly, uh, we'll say, one year ago, maybe a little less than one year ago. Uh, it was actually something I filmed as a bit of a promo for my uh, my training camp in Thailand, which was focused on single X, butterfly, uh, and X guard. Um, although that was last year. I do actually have another Thailand camp coming up. Uh, this year, which will be focused on playing and passing the the half guard, that's on June thirtieth. Uh, if just check the link below if you're interested in that. But I actually wanted to do some narrated rolling, um, just narrate some of the stuff we did in this particular session. So um, essentially, it was a specific training session, um, which uh, or a specific specific scenario session where the winner, your starting uh, person on bottom, starts from guard. If you sweep or submit, you get to stay in. So it's basically whoever wins stays in. It's basically first point person starts from guard. So if you get a sweep, you win. If they pass, they win and they stay in starting on their back. Okay, so um, we'll see how. There's a, uh, it was about a 17 minute quick clip. If I narrate the whole thing and pause, it'll end up going for an hour. So I'll probably try to get a rough 10 to 15 minutes in. So here's my first one against Alessia. And she's going for the single leg. I won't do too much about the uh, my top game here. Um, although, this is probably not a bad one. Just to show, like, whenever you're rolling with someone a bit lighter than you, notice I'm really trying to move well. I'm trying to move and change directions well. Not fast. Don't, like, thrash around, because that's how you injure people, especially when you're heavier than them. And I'm, But I'm trying not to, like, just put all my weight on her either, because it's not going to give her anything some, any what, uh, close to what she would experience in a in an actual uh, role or competition against someone her size so this was actually <laughs> this shouldn't actually work uh, but I landed in a nice Kimura and she, <laughs> and she tapped but yeah uh, anyway that was probably actually because I was bigger <laughs> that worked um, all right so now I'm on the bottom and you get to see me trying to play my butterfly X and Shin to Shin game now I guess one thing I should say Pretty much most people at our gym will start their pass standing, so it's much more likely I'm going to end up playing like single X or X, um, or potentially chasing down a single leg than I end up in butterfly. It's only really if they're on their knees that I do play butterfly. Um, and I want to say too, so I have an instructional um, out on the grapplers guide that is around my butterfly and single X and X guard game, and it's it's pretty it's quite in depth, it's quite similar to the way I've I've run my half guard instructional, so that's really good. And if you want to check it out, there's a link below. You can also save thirty percent if you use a coupon code with my name on it as well. So that's uh, I think it's a really good site. I actually got it for Liv, my my uh, wife. I got it to for her for Christmas as well, and we've both been watching the Grapplers Guide, and there's some really good other instructors on there as well. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, so here I am with Dion, and we're just first off, just like notice my posture here. So initially I've got my head forward. Don't go too low with your head, because then you expose yourself to, to guillotine. So it's, it's a fine line. If you're too high, it lets them get their head in and start to drive you back. If you're too low with your head, then uh, you have to risk getting choked. Um, so I tend to, like if you can think about it, same line as their head, or sometimes just slightly lower than the line of their head, but not too low. Okay, and then you've got to track them if they drop uh, high or low. Okay, uh, and next I'm trying to hand fight. I'm lent forward because I don't want Dion easy to have easy access to my legs. That's going to start to uh, bother me. One, so I don't get he doesn't get at my legs. But two, if he pushes me backwards, if I'm already almost falling backwards and I'm sort of sitting more upright, then it's going to be easy for Dion to knock me back, and then I can't use my hands at all. So I'm lent forward, and my hands are fighting Dion's hands here. So I'm trying to get usually from this sort of distance, I will look for an arm drag. This, that's a great initial attack. You will not arm drag to someone's back though, when uh, when they're standing. There's no way I'm going to arm drag. Well, unless you unless you can literally stand up as you arm drag, which is possible. Now, I've seen half a Mendes do that, but you have to be super nimble to to do that. Um, usually, what will happen? You'll arm drag and take a single leg, which could lead to shin to shin, or that could lead to a single leg takedown. Um, so when they're on their knees, obviously you can arm drag straight to the back a little easier. So I'm trying to grip fight, two on the one wrist. Okay, so Dion's forced me to the side and he's picked up my leg. So let's have a look at that again. Sorry. He's picked up my leg. 
and he's and he started to come across for his knee cut. He's got quite a good knee cut with his right leg forward. So I've grabbed that leg immediately. Okay. And now that I've got that, I go to like see I've got reverse de la Hiva and a grip around the knee. I like this position because if they posture up, I can spin underneath using reverse de la Hiva. But I can also, if they back away, which they often will will do, I can start to switch to shin to shin. Um, I can also just come straight up for a single leg at some point if I see the chance. So this is a, it's not used that common, but I use this a lot. I think it's a really good transition guard. So it's like reverse de la Hiva with a single leg grip. So you can see I've fed my foot through. I've now got shin to shin. Perfect position to try to get to single legs. So now the battle is going to be if Dion can force me onto my right hip, it's going to be... Uh, sorry, if he can force his weight to his right, it's going to be more difficult. I want to force... Actually, I want to keep his head and his waist... Sorry, I want to keep his head out to the right, but I want to pull his foot out to the to the left. I want to disengage that. Sometimes if you pull their leg to the left, but he follows, that can end up in a near side knee through as well, which can be bad. So let's see what happens here. I rock back to get... I want to elevate his foot, okay? But you see, Dion's doing well here. He's trying to punch an underhook. He's bent his heel to his butt. It's not going to be easy for me to just... Like from this angle to just pull his foot over the top of my leg into single X. So I've rolled to my side. See that? And I've started to extend with this leg. That's, it's very subtle. But watch this. Okay, so see how bent my knee is here? I'll start to extend that knee as I rock. So I roll backwards and then I kick out a little bit towards the camera, uh, which turns his foot out relative to where Dion is. So it gets his foot off center. Okay, there it is. So now his foot is no longer under his butt. It's a little bit out. Okay, and that will that room now behind that foot is where I could potentially kick my knee and pull back into the single X. Let's see. Anyway. So Dion started to bring his weight this way, which would be bad if he got his whole weight over this side. Uh, let's see. I managed to elevate him though. Okay, so when he's elevated like that, it's quite difficult to... Um, for him to really put weight down on this knee to stop that. If he kept his hips low here and got his weight out here, that would be bad for me. All right, and he started to try to come across for the knee cut again. His foot's out quite wide. Let's see, I should be able to kick through here. There we go, and okay, good. I brought him forward. My foot's about to go on the hip. That wasn't exactly what I wanted to show you because uh, I ended up doing something else, but Dion's actually, I think he tried to attack my arm while he was forward, which has let me come on top. So let's just see. Dion has a, I won't give away his, best move but he off, he's very good at attacking your your arm from on on top um but i've managed to pummel in front of the head so that was he probably should have been posting there all right so that's the first sweep and then next person comes out who's this ah uh, david david from peru uh he's moved back to peru now since we filmed this so hope all is well david um if you're in peru i don't know how you're going to find david he's a brown belt but try to find him good guy Really nice guy. All right, so again, I'm sitting forward. I'm looking for the arm drag, okay? And I get it that time. But it wasn't clean. As I said, you'll often end up on a single leg. And I've ended up back in shin to shin. Okay, let's have a look at that again. Okay, so I'm going to look for the arm drag on this David's right arm. I've got his wrist grip now. My right hand's come through. I'm successful at, well, sort of successful at dragging the arm. But David started to back away. So I'm able to reach for his leg, but it's not the same. Like my chest is not connected. I've had to kind of extend my arm. So I chase him to get up, but it's a bit of a single leg scramble. Um, as I'm trying to turn the corner, I felt like it wasn't working too well. So I'm going to sit back into shin to shin. So at least I get like good positioning out of the whole exchange. Okay, so now I've got that same shin to shin position. So notice this right foot. It's actually trying to keep David's weight. Oh, well... I want to be able to elevate him and then extend like a little bit outwards to stop his weight from coming across. It's kind of a fine line because if you push too let outwards first, you'll never extend and it's actually just going to knee cut. So I kind of want to elevate first but then have outward pressure to stop him from, from driving his knee down onto the mat this side. Alright, but instead, the way he's stepped, I've used that hook to actually be able to grab that leg. We can watch that once more. So I get my shin to shin, and I'll grab that leg. Now, if I'm able to enter shin to shin uh, into single leg X here, this is really good because I've already got the far leg trapped. So if I can trap this leg, David's balance behind him is going to be pretty poor. 
So I elevate now, I elevate with my right leg. This is going to stop David from dropping down into a near side knee through too. So if I can pull him through into single X with this elevation, yes, and immediately I'm already halfway through the standard single X sweep with the two legs trapped. And we come up. Okay, so let's have a look at that again. Grab the far leg, turn the, f that's that same turn of the heel. I think that's a, like an area where people really, most people would lose that here. I've got the hook, but he's really heavy on that hook. You have to turn the foot out. Watch this foot. When I elevate first, so I kind of rock back to, oh, sorry, actually I, f I turn foot first in that scenario. Look at the angle there that I've turned his foot out. So away, he's got way less ability to hold position there. So watch that right foot again. Turned it out. Okay, now when I kick up, easy entry. Okay, so make sure you're doing that. That's, you know, I, I would say one of my best skills in jiu-jitsu is getting to single X from shin to shin. A lot of people really struggle with that, and that's one thing I do really well. All right, now this is Ed. Ed is ferocious in this role, <laughs> um, and he actually puts me in a pretty bad spot early on. He's gone for like a, a smash pass. I do a pretty cool move here that has nothing to do with, with single X. Um, but yeah, he's got me in a, a bit of trouble here because he's connected to my legs. He's a little low on the body, so he's got a lot of climbing to do, but I definitely would not like to be in this position. Okay, so watch that little thing. This is something I like to do from the... When someone's got me in the smash pass, if they're really heavy on the legs, you need to sit up. So you'll see as he starts trying to clear his legs here, I get my hook just to stop him running around, and I start to get up with a gooseneck. Okay. When he starts to move off the legs then, that gives me a chance to lift and elevate with that hook. It can sometimes be a sweep. There we go. That can sometimes land as a sweep, but often you don't have amazing leverage to get on top. So often you'll, you'll just reset the position like, like what happened there. So Ed's gone at it again. I tried to butterfly sweep there, if you just see that, which will often be successful, but not in that case. So I have a good grip on the tricep. You, you can definitely butterfly sweep with the tricep grip, like especially near the shoulder. It can be an underhook, and be it can be anything on this side as long as I can pull his weight forward and onto me. Unfortunately, he's got this post here, which I'm trying to remove. Um, now I talk about this in the in, in the grapplers guide thing, but watch the butt hop. Okay, it, this sweep doesn't work, but I still think it's really important to to notice. I'm gonna hop my butt underneath, so I'm trying to tilt. Imagine if I get Ed's weight really on my left side, especially if he didn't have that post there. He's going over for sure. Uh, but it's hard to do that um, when his weight is back. So instead of me working really hard to move him across, what I want to do is scoot myself like in and under there, which makes him relative to me on that same angle. So we'll just watch my, my hips here. Boom. Slight movement. Subtle, but it makes a difference. You, you watch Marcelo Garcia, he uses that all the time. Now, Ed's a hard one to butterfly sweep. Look how low and far back he is. So that's a hard person to get in a sweep like that. Usually for someone like that, attacking something like a guillotine might be a more appropriate scenario. But he's actually ended up on the rugby pass. I'll do a nice cool thing here, which I learnt from my wrestling coach, Talgut. So as he's coming around, it's a double leg defense. Imagine he's like he's got a double leg. Reach around the hips. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to like a crucifix type position and roll on top. Uh, that's not the move I was aiming to do, but that's how we ended up. Uh, I wouldn't try to replicate that exactly, but there are some good things to do here. Okay, so now I've got Marcus. Marcus is a brown belt, and he has a really nice back step. He always works his back step as soon as he goes shin to shin, and this is one of the most common uh, ways people counter it. And it's actually really hard to deal with if someone's got to, like, when you're playing shin to shin, you almost have to play a different guard a lot of the time. Um, now, one thing I can try to do is get a Berambolo from, from shin to shin. So, essentially, if my right leg goes across the chest, all I have to do is take my left leg out, and that's the exact position of the, the Berambolo. But uh, you'll see Marcus is holding that leg, so I can't quite get it in front as much as I would like to. He's trying to back step and end up in uh, reverse half guard, which he actually does here. But I can start to invert. Now, I'm in a little bit of trouble, but my knees are in front, so it's hard for Marcus to consolidate position here. And I managed to recover back to the seated position. Yeah, here we are. Okay, straight back on the knee. And Marcus is already starting to backstep again. 
So he's, he's very quick on that. Now, when they backstep, you have to be wary of Kimuras and those sort of things. So look at where my arm is. Hard for him to swing over and catch my my wrist with that hand when I've trapped the uh, the back of his shoulder here. If my hand was just dangling you know, down near his leg, that Kimura would be very easy. Also, my head positioning. It's un in front of his shoulder, so he can't dive for the Kimura. All right, Marcus drops down. All right, this time I bear and bowler. All right, we got him. All right, I'll break that down, and that might be it for, for this narrated roll. Okay, so so I've kept my my hook sticky, but notice this compared to the last time. That one of the main differences, my right leg does manage to come across Marcus's chest. So see my shin here. Okay, now that's a tat like my thigh. Sorry, is attached to Marcus's chest, and I've knocked him onto his back. So this foot is still a hook which is un it's not normal bearing ball normally you'd kick that leg through but I'm actually keeping that hook and it can serve a similar purpose so I grab the far hip push myself on top so this could just come up for a sweep but if I keep this and I can start to like as Marcus defends I can roll back through and often get momentum to expose his back so see how his back's lifted off the ground now I'm just basically going to try to reach and sit up towards the back if I can try and get my chest towards his back it's going to be a high chance of finishing so I've extended again a little bit now my chest is behind the back the last thing battle here Marcus like if they people if people are good at this battle they're gonna try and frame your head away um, but I think I might be too quick on this so I've got his hip I'm gonna be reaching for the back of his shoulder if I get the back of his shoulder hard for him to frame me away if he frames first okay I got his shoulder and my legs are already swinging over as a hook and we've got the back all right hope you enjoyed that guys I might even do another thing like this again soon with the rest of this clip uh, anyway uh, check out my butterfly x and single leg x game on the grapplersguide.com and make sure you use the, the coupon code which will save you 30% and it will help me out too so if you can do that that would be awesome thank you